Okay, so let's go. Gender-based violence is something that we've all been hearing about, especially now, recently, mm. everybody's talking about it. Everybody who wants to be heard and seen is discussing it. I'm not so sure if it's always for the right reasons, but they are nonetheless. Uh, we've had discussions on this platform many, many times around gender-based violence. We've differed a lot, and I've decided to have other people have this conversation because there is a sense that I think we are looking at it at different perspectives. And sometimes it gets very tense and uh, each side doesn't want to listen to the other. So let's open it up today. Forget about my perceptions, forget about my bias, because I do have a bias and I'm not apologizing for that. But I do want you to have uh, an open conversation with other people with different views. 0891-104-207 is the number to dial. And the question is very simple. What is it going to change? What is it going to require from all of us to change gender-based violence? I've got four panel. Jeremy Fugeng, who is, uh, I would say, a veteran actor. He may say, no, I'm not veteran, I'm young. But that's <laughs> besides the point. <laughs> and I'm also with even, uh, an even younger actor, Fumani Shirwana. And... Uh, and uh, I'm also with Gavin Moffat, who is a co-founder at Hers and His, and uh, also Join the Dots, Professor Monde Matwane, who's currently an independent at the uh, Walter Susulu University, really just a consultant as well. Okay, gentlemen, so we hear government speakers every day these days. It's a thing. People stand on podiums and talk about, don't do this, don't do that, you know, it's wrong, let's call each other out. We hear everybody who's on a podium today talking about gender-based violence. Here's my issue. It's at a very high level, kind of a talking down to, guys, don't do this, right? I bet you in people's homes, change is not happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I bet. Yes, I agree. Why do you think that is the case? Let's start with you, Dati Hey. Yeah. Um, there, there, there's a concept that's sort of intimidating called patriarchy. It's also called social so socialization. Mm -hmm. It's also called miseducation. It's, it's, it's very cheap to march out there. It's very cheap to make public statements and all that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have a problem, just making an example. We can't yell in yellow. Mm -hmm. You take Magoti and you try and pressure cook her for 30 minutes for her to become a good mother, a good wife, a good Magoti, and good everything. Mm -hmm. After 30 years, you're wasting your time. You should have started while she was in the womb. And, and, and I'm saying that to say this. Mm -hmm. What do we teach the boy child? And generally, we, we teach the man uh, allow me to say that black men in the total Tusa to make it uh, <laughs> broader. But we teach the black man he is entitled. He has a right to. Jerry Hoods Hak and Yellow Club are better. Jerry is difficult. If he got married, he'll be better. And so my wife is babysitting the 38 year old me because my mother is tired. So she must pick up after me. She must take care of my temper tantrums, my boyish temper tantrums. Tiptoe around you. Tiptoe around me. And the thing is, everybody defends me. And I defend me. And so until and unless the man is born in me, everybody is wasting their time. And until and unless the male in me is called to order, it's just a waste of time because we feel entitled. My daughter had a seminar with boys, uh, primary school boys. Mm. Uh, you, you see, if, if I buy a girl uh, some drinks and, and, and then I say, you gotta come with me uh, to my place. And, and my daughter says, and if she doesn't, he says, I'll rape her. That's it. That, that's it. So, so there is something in us that has been educated and justified 
and protected even legally, which is why a man is normal for the 17 years he's been abusing this woman. When he gets arrested, we need a psychiatric opinion. Okay. So let's open it. I saw the lines were opened uh, and, and there was a flood of calls coming through. We'll open it now. I can tell you they're going to have a lot to say. And one of the things that I'm anticipating is going to be said, it's said to me every day since I've been here, is that they provoke us. <laughs> Women provoke us. I'll tell okay. you what's not funny and can about can you believe I'll that? tell you what's not funny about that. Because people who say it, believe it. 100% they believe yeah. it, yeah. Without, it, without a doubt. Yeah. The excuses and the reasons that I hear are actually mind-numbing at, at this stage of my life. I, I cannot believe that men actually believe that anything a woman wears gives them the right to do anything whatsoever to that woman. Yeah. One of the campaigns that I think is should be on everyone's lips is one called No Excuse. Hashtag no excuse. Yes. There is no reason to ever touch a woman under any circumstances whatsoever. And if that is the starting point, then you cannot have rape. You cannot have sexual harassment. You cannot have any of the things that make up gender-based violence. They would be impossible. Why? Because there is no excuse. There's no reason to touch a woman. Here, yeah. Here's why that, that doesn't work for me. Right? Gavin's statement doesn't work for me. Because the truth of the matter is that the people that call in and say this, in what would be a general society, are seen as decent people. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So all of them will agree with everything that the jury has just said. Agreed. With everything that the president says, with all campaigns, and they'll say, no, of course we don't want to beat women, but, and they consider themselves decent human People. beings. Mm -hmm. So what's the problem? What's the problem? Well, I want to say that gender-based violence is a perpetual of inequality between men and women. It's also caused by existing uh, uh, inequality. Some of the inequalities uh, we are not sadly about. We can, we can blame individual men, but structure of inequality is still intact. I'll make a, a number of examples. For instance, the, the community that I'm working with, mm -hmm. the community is a very stable commu community, and there doesn't seem to be a violence. Well, historically, uh, there, there wasn't uh, really much violence. Mm -hmm. But after some time, there was a mine. And we know that the mine uh, mostly employs men. Mm. Suddenly, men, their status has been raised, their income has been raised, and women have been left behind. So these men, they sort of own women because they've got uh, monetary buying power, power. Mm -hmm. uh, buying power. And we cannot blame women because they are so poor and so on. So these are subtle uh, inequalities, not only historical, but uh, uh, what we see as changes, as improvement, actually causes more inequalities. Uh, uh, I can speak about others. Yeah. Mm. Okay, the lines are open 0891-104-207. I see them coming through, but while uh, Tabelo deals with that, let me ask you for money. What what kind of conversations are happening with younger pe people? A and I'll tell you why. The the guy that is said to have stabbed Precious 25 times is a young guy. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to go to, we've been taught, we come from the society as an older person, this is all I've known. In his 20 year, I think it's 21 or something, he's in his 20s. Mm. In In that time, He's been hearing about the plea for people to respect women. What do you think is going on there? It's, it's, it's a difficult one and, and a bit complicated. And I, like, like you said at the beginning, uh, we can't fault you for being biased about a certain situation because it's women who are being victim of this particular thing. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, my, my one, it, it, it goes to so, how we are socialized. Mm. Uh, I'll go back a bit back. Mm. We, we formed a foundation five figures a day. And the whole point of that was how, what, what's happening in, in our society. People used to laugh at me with my kid. I didn't understand why. Why am I peeping my child? Mm -hmm. When I dig further, I realized, oh, actually, a black family mm -hmm. has been broken into two. There's father, mother, mm -hmm. and children. Mm -hmm. Father is in the mind with me there forever. And actually, there were contracts that stated that you could be there for like, you go home only in December and thingy, and Easter. Mm -hmm. So in all that, we find ourselves in a position where 
the boy child, girl child, grow up in a position where they are not protected or rather they are not in a position that are groomed with a man, male figure in that society. Mm. When they grow up, they feel good. Oh, what? I can do whatever I want to do. In 1953, a study came out. A lady spoke to the government to say, listen, we are we broken with the system that is in place. We've actually broken the Ubuntu system that this a community's had. And because of that, it will give us a problem. Government didn't listen to her. Guess what? The train killings, the ill violence that was happening in the train, it was from kids that took care of themselves without fathers. Fathers that were, 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 were migrant workers, where it's living, who had needs, mm. made children, eventually those kids became the kids that were killing the train. So you see, for me, the backbone of it all is family. Okay. I think it's, it's, it's almost simpler than that, if I could. It, mm. it comes down to, I think, something that you refer to as wounded masculinity. Mm. So it's an incredibly complex thing. I think that's one of the challenges with your question is, mm. how do you answer that question? There are so many levels to that, that question. It's so so hard to answer. At its most base level, I think it's about wounded masculinity. So men have been wounded by whatever it is that they've gone through, and they are therefore acting out in whatever way they're acting out as a result of that. And one of the big challenges that we have in South Africa is that we are the biggest fatherless nation in the world. Yes. That alone creates a tremendous amount of wounded masculinity. If men have not had positive role models and mentors in their life that have shown them how to show up as a male, how to show up in respect of women and children, how can they possibly know how to react? They're only going to go with whatever other influences they have. Mm -hmm. So I think now, the wounded masculine talking about is fatherless part. society, mm -hmm. yes. it's not because the fathers are not there, but because we had a right to abandon and deny our children. And unfortunately, that culture goes on to the next generation because quite often we become the very thing that we hate which is why your girlfriend gets pregnant the first question is how much do you want to get rid of it? Oh, exactly also finally find with psychology it's, it's um, of course i'm not a psychologist but it's proven that as human beings from zero to three we make our world now here are these kids boy girl grow up in a community where there are no men when they grow up, like Papa is saying, we are beca we becoming exactly that. Because what's wrong with me? I mean, I, I grew up in a community where there's nothing. Why must I do something different? Let me, let me take those calls. Candisa, you're calling us from Clackstop. Okay, we've lost Candisa. Let, 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 let me tell you what I think is amazing. And this is quite a profound discovery. Mm. So I've got four men here. Mm -hmm. Strong voices, passionate voices. You are men in your own right and you know you, you, you stand your ground. It is now 25 minutes into the conversation. Mm -hmm. Not one man has called to defend themselves about how it's, it's always a woman's fault. Every time I have this conversation on my own without a man, mm -hmm. the first person that calls tells me I'm out of line. Why? And I'm asking you guys, what do you make of this? Because you, number one, have been very strong in your language, right? If I spoke in your tone, I'd be told to sit down because it's happened every single time I've been here. Mm. If I had this conversation without you here, I'd be told to sit down, which happens here every day. I'm amazed at now four men are here and nobody can challenge what you guys are saying. Uh, can I, can I, can I, can I? There's, there's something that I am advocating for, mm -hmm. and it's simply this. I'm asking for one man army mm. everywhere you have an influence. In other words, I start with me and my home and the production that I am in and the workshop that I am running, and I say, not in my presence. If you believe it. That is not only believe, believe it, believe but it. live it. But live it. I challenged somebody who was saying, hey, let's go to the market theater. We must go and speak with one voice as artists. Mm -hmm. And I say, a lot of people out there, a lot of young actresses are going to be saying, listen who's talking. Mm -hmm. Listen, you you got to believe it, but you all, you, you got to live it. And so when you speak, the young men 
listen to me because I live it. And, and so that's why the answer starts with me, not in a match, in me, in the little circles where I have an influence. And, and so a young man can call himself out and at, 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 whether it's in the production or in the uh, closing party for the film or anywhere, you, you, you become the staple singer song goes, I'm just another soldier in the army of love. Re- substitutes that love in the army of, yeah. Well, it, it's easy to be very preachy. Yes. Uh, 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 being male. Mm. Yeah, the wrong man, they are spoiling on him. But there are many hard questions which uh, I'm not sure whether we are prepared to ask mm. and answer. Mm. I'll make examples. A uh, 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 disparity in society between men and, uh, and women. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 um, do we question disparity in, in the number of relationships? Mm-hmm. The fact that it's accepted for men to have more rela- relationships mm-hmm. than female. Mm-hmm. Do we do we question the uh, uh, age gap in relationship? Do we question, for instance, um, our health? Do we care for our health? Many men uh, don't go. For, for, for health issues, including mental issues. Uh, 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 as a result, uh, uh, they are angry. They don't go for counseling uh, 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 to take out that, that anger. Mm. Do we question that? Do we, do we have uh, um, sort of campaigns for men to go for, for health counseling mm. and, and mental ca- counseling? Do we know that uh, one of the reasons why there um, uh, the, are fewer fathers it's because men die early, because they don't care for their health. If they don't care for their health, how can they care for the health of other people? So there are very hard questions which we, we must ask. Uh, uh, for instance, education. We know that women in, in today's South Africa they stay more in, in school and in, in education than males, but still males are more likely to get a job uh, and they are more likely to, to get higher payment than females. Mm-hmm. What is happening there? And there are so many issues. Issues about mobility. It's easier for a man to move both within a residential area or to move from one region to another than a female. And those are, are the hard questions uh, uh, which, which uh, uh, we don't go deep into them. We'll continue with this conversation and I'll open those lines as well. And 891 now I want to quickly go to Uzi Lesaku for the latest in headlines. We've got an, a big panel and we're discussing gender-based violence and uh, we are opening the lines on 891 WhatsApp notes as well, 061-410-4107 for you who wants to maybe send us a WhatsApp note. Okay, so we've spoken about a few things. Um, we've touched on some of the issues that I think uh, we're scratching at the surface of what may be the problem. I mean, it's big. So, Prof, you, you alluded to the fact that we have not discussed health issues, mental health issues with men. And that's where I agree with some most men to say that there are underlying issues that they themselves have not dealt with. So when I when I then stand up and challenge a man, he feels like I'm challenging his entire being mm-hmm. because he's got issues in that <laughs> being of his, right? Um, and there are some who understand the fact that, you know, being the fact that he grew up fatherless and whatever, it has impacted on where he is today. The question I ask then is, why is it so difficult for men to accept the fact that they are ill and they must just get help? It's a power, it's the power play. Okay. Simple as that. Because as men, we are put in a position that, listen, if you ask her out, she has to say yes. If you do this, you can't speak about it. If you don't do that, therefore you are weak. So I'm at the position where I'm like, hey, what? If I do that, then I'll be pre- pre- seen in, as a weakling. Then therefore, I don't want to expose myself to that level. Amen. Mm. 
anything that suggests I am a failure, mm-hmm. I fight. Mm. Like that, that's the first impulse. So, so do all these men who are not calling afraid of you? Well, it's, it's all about masculinity and our current understanding of what, what masculinity is. Men are, are much more happy challenging a woman because in general, well, why though? In general, men tend to see women as being inferior. Why? Mm. Masculinity has painted men as being superior. Mm. So when men pitch up, what are we supposed to be? We're supposed to be tough. We're supposed to be able to do everything we need to do. We're supposed to be able to fight, uh, earn the money, look after, protect, all of those things. And if you're doing all of that, how can you possibly show vulnerability? Exactly. Mm-hmm. How can you possibly go, I'm really feeling down today. I need to go and talk to somebody about how depressed I feel or how unhappy I feel. Actually, you, you, I'm you tired. I'm yeah, t- I'm tired. You know, it's come to the end of the year and you're hearing lots of people talking about they're tired, but they're not necessarily talking about how actually tired mm. they are, mm-hmm. how they're actually feeling depleted, depressed. And then what do they do with those things? They're going to take them out on, on their kids and family at home. So uh, one of our biggest challenges, the way the current society views masculinity creates a bubble in which men are supposed to respond and men don't feel capable of responding outside of that. Now, you've got to remember, none of this says that what they're doing is okay. It's just a way to understand why they respond like they respond. Mm. Because I go back to what you didn't like, which is there's no excuse. Mm. And what I wasn't saying was that this is a campaign that is going to work. Mm. There are so many different levels at which we have to deal with this problem. One of them is at um, base level. So when kids are born, there is a certain stuff that they need from the age of one to six. Then when kids are teenagers, there's certain things that they need. Then when they turn into men, there's certain things that they need. Some of the things that we do within corporates, we're actually finding men who are between 30 and 45 who've never had serious conversations about their own sexuality, Mm -hmm. uh, their own place in life, their feelings of um, loss, powerlessness, um, their fear of what's going to happen to them if they lose their job. And these are men who are highly qualified. They've got MBAs. They earn a million rand, three million rand a year. They never had these kind of conversations. Why? They're not allowed to. We're invulnerable mm-hmm. as, as men, as, as masculine. We're invulnerable. And so I think one of the things that's really important is that men get given a space to be able to have these kind of conversations. Mm. All right, so we've got the voice notes. Let's just play the voice notes that have come through. Hi, Penelo. I get so angry when men talk about protecting women. We don't need protection. Men need to look after their issues. And then we'll be fine. Please don't try and protect me. I'm not a victim. I'm not. I'm, I'm not at a disadvantage because of being female. Men must sort out their nonsense. Thank. I, Pamelo, Bafuma, Western Cape. I think the the problem that we have have facing here as a country is that we we really don't have the the the. the the people, or rather, to look up to in terms of uh, father figures, mother figures, like back in the days where, uh, like, this whole street would be, you know, belonging to everyone. Oh, we've just lost that. I think it's definitely my mistake. <laughs> uh, it's really definitely, my, well, I'll get back to that because there was a, uh, a message that was coming through which was saying, I'm defending men, and it was going on to say, women dress something. We'll try and get that uh, back and, and try and see what the gentleman was saying. I think it's a man. Just a quick one on the first lady. I don't need to protect her against me, but I might have to pre- protect her against the vultures. Mm. And if she doesn't need my help, that's fine. But you see, Sheva, Pamela, I know there are certain things I and a few good men Mm -hmm. will never do. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean there are no men who will do that. So let me me ask everybody this question. If we know that the crime doesn't pay, Mm -hmm. or does it pay? Of course it pays. It 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 pays. Or does it it pay? It does. What's our conviction rate for rape? Anybody know the number? It's so low that nobody knows the number. I know know it's very low. Crime pays. Of course it does. When is is somebody going to get convicted for sexual assault? It's just not going to happen. And how easy... Particularly when men are in charge. And how how easy are we going to make the reporting 
think oh. about this. You go to a, a police station, we're sitting in those little cubicles, and she comes as vulnerable as she is. She has a report there. Really? Uh, I mean, you saw the numbers recently where 87% of police stations did not have rape kits. Mm. That says something to you mm. all on its own. And the ones that do, nobody's trained to be able to deal with somebody who's been raped. That alone says a tremendous amount all on its own. We're not, we're not ready to be able to deal with this. Systemically, it's broken. It was interesting for me to see how we were all, in fact, the nation was divided last week when there was that uh, chairman's conversation. Yes. I always comment about the fact that people say, keep on saying that, oh, let's bring harsh sentences. What's the use of having very harsh sentences to 5% of men and others n never get convicted? The issue in South Africa is not that sentences are light. The issue is that most of the men don't get convicted. And it's where we must work on very hard. Actually, during the march in Sentin recently, the I am next march, mm. it it came out that one of the guys was marching yes, with the ladies. Back, back mm. That was the one down in Cape Town. Uh, but you can, you can understand, why would a woman come forward and report having been raped when she has no belief in the system? She doesn't believe that she's going to be supported. She doesn't believe she's going to be able to get uh, justice mm. for what has happened to or her. Believed. Wh why would Why would she... Or believed. I think that's the baseline. Mm. The first conversation would be, well, what were you wearing? Really? What did you do? What did you do? So how many drinks had you had? And, and so if those are the kind of questions in the conversation that start off at the beginning of a, of a reporting of a rape... How is that possibly going to turn out okay for us? All right, we'll take those calls on 0891-104-207. I'm with the phone full panel, and we're discussing gender-based violence. What is it going to take to get this under control? Okay, let's have that uh, voice note that we messed up a little bit earlier. Hi, Pamelo, Bafuma, uh, Western Cape. I think the, the problem that we have, have facing here as a country is that we we really don't have the 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 the, the people you know, or rather to look up to in terms of uh, father figures mother figures like back in the days where uh, like this whole street would be you know belonging to everyone living in that particular street but now with kids having kids uh, it's all about it's my kid. You can't uh, reprimand and so forth, and that escalates to the whole community. If you know what I mean. Thank you, bye. And here's another one. All right, so I'm I'm gonna try and. Hi, SFM and team. I'm Jatina here from Durban. Uh, so this other day I was uh, driving and I picked up some people. I'm a boat driver. And there were three, uh, four guys, uh, one gentleman, another gentleman, and his family. Uh, his family includes of his wife and daughter. So what uh, made me to go crazy is that I'm always listening to SFM. I'm always, always listening about this gender-based violence. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, I heard this man started to shout to his wife, "You." Don't think before you act. I don't know why I married you. Uh, you know, you are senseless. All those words he said in front of the daughter. So, what should we expect the daughter to be in future if we have such kind of men? Thank you. Thanks, George. We got that. Let's just listen to some voice noise before we wrap up. In 1999, I went to the police station to report violence against me, being perpetrated against me by my wife. And uh, they, they, they laughed at me and they made a joke of it. A year later, I approached the court for an order against my wife, who was aggressive and violent. It's not that I couldn't hit her or I couldn't handle her. But it's not the way I was raised. And a magistrate laughed at me and they turned it and they issued a violence order against me. So with that type of behavior, uh, I, I can't blame people for not wanting to go forward, especially women who have been raped. 
Did anybody understand that? Mm. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Do you want to respond to that? I, I think one of the uh, challenges that we have within our system is that when men are the subject of gender-based violence, mm -hmm. they are not taken seriously, they are not laughed at, and it happens. Uh, boys are raped, men are raped, it happens every single day. The number is just so small that it's not reported. Um, and I was... Uh, I, I'm, I'll tell you why I battle with that statement. Mm. Because I think here I've had, if not minimum of five organizations that purport to be supporting men. Mm. We bring them up all the time. If society is not ready to accept that men have got problems, why don't you just call the organizations that you know will hear you? Mm -hmm. So... It's not that there is no help. I just feel that we are not willing to deal with the issue. Every man that calls with that excuse will never tell you whether they called and reached out. If we can teach children to call out to Childline, men have the option to seek help. Why don't they seek help? You're 100% right that men don't generally seek help. And that's why organizations like Mankind Project are around exactly for that reason. To but try this and guy help. is not going to phone. Mm. He, he this isn't. guy is not going to and phone. That's why you're only not in my name. The people no. who understand his problem. Why? You're only going to be able to deal with those people who are in some way interested in changing. Oh. And then the other half you'll have to shame into not doing what they're currently doing. But you can only work with men who are interested in being better men. You can't force men to be better men if they don't want to. I made a point mm -hmm. that, for instance, hospitals are full of women. There are very few men in hospitals. Is it because men are not sick? No. We know that men die early. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a point that men are not healthy, but they don't go for, for help. Mm -hmm. That is the greatest problem that we are facing. Mm. to encourage and create a good environment for men to seek help. And this is why I, I'm quite strong on this. When you respond with, I tell you what, for women too who go to the police station and to the magistrate, they get the same response. So this notion that only men are laughed at is quite mm. silly. Absolutely. That's our daily experience. Mm -hmm. We go to the police station, the police doesn't necessarily welcome our complaints. Mm -hmm. and, and when you say that, it's like you're defending the other. I'm not. I'm just simply saying there are avenues. Why are we not seeking the help that is offered to us? We touched on this a bit earlier. Personally, I believe the reporting system of this particular case is, is not adequate. Yeah, but it's you've got your organization. Even, right. even if they come to my organization, at the end of the day, there are certain levels of, of issues that I, for my a psychologist, therefore, there's a point in time that I must escalate it. Mm. Even if you do, mm. I would say, it ends up to a point where people are being laughed at, whether men or women. Mm. So, like I, I, I said earlier, if we're not going to create an, a, a space where anyone, whether it be woman or man, mm. to report it in a space where it's safe, mm. we, we will be on our Okay. We, but just touched the surface. We haven't even gotten to the issues yet. I yeah. do appreciate the time that you've given us because at least you've left us with something to think about. Uh, Jerome Fuking, an actor. Gavin Moffat, you are an activist. And uh, Professor Monda Makluani, who is a consultant at the University of uh, Walter Susulu Fumani Shilubani, and he's also an actor. I really appreciate the time you've given us. And I also appreciate you for taking the time to listen and engage with this discussion. Three o'clock now, let's go to Utsi Lesako for the latest in SABC News.